Don't get me wrong. I mean, on the social hierarchy, of course, you're going to worry about your children more than adults. That's understood. But by the science and, and the what's been given so far, adults have got shafted and adults have been harmed. I mean, I've at this point interviewed hundreds of people here, most of them adults. I've seen children too damaged, but I mean, you've got adults I've met that are in their 30s and look like they're in their 70s. Uh, you've got adults that have developed Parkinson's, epilepsy, mystery cancers at the age of 30 that no diagnosis. I mean, you've seen it. So most of the Medicaid expansion, I think almost all of it, went to children under six. So there's been huge gaps. And adults, I mean, look at Vicky. She's in her 60s. She still has to work with Parkinson's, this and that, that came on in the water. I mean, there's so many examples where adults have basically been told, well, we've got to focus on the kids. Uh, and these are not old people, 40s, 50s, 60s. Um, in 2016, we actually applied for an NIH grant um, to do an epidemiological study of all ages in Flint, basically testing the water and then testing blood, skin, um, so, you know, skin cells, toenails, because toenails actually go back 18 months and show not only what you're exposed to but body load, how much your body's actually holding on to and what's still in there, and uh, hair and all that stuff, and we got turned down for that. We, we need that. I, you know, like, we're a treasure trove. Uh, it's not going to, like, fix us, but it's going to prevent this from happening to another city because if you can actually see the full scope of the damage, because they keep saying, oh, this, you know, there's, like, eight, ten thousand 10,000 children that blah, 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 and, you know, like, some, like, a third of our kids are need our special needs in school, but actually it's higher than that because they're refusing to test our kids. So, <laughs> well, there's a different story. Um, and we don't have the special ed resources, blah, 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 and it's all to keep somebody from paying for what they did so we need scientists that are out here that are independent that will do these like just look at our medical records how many people have had seizures how many people um you know like have had the bone pain and the the brand new you know autoimmune disorders things that don't run in their family at all the parkinson's the you know alzheimer's you know the, things like that like which they even know that alzheimer's is caused you know by heavy metals and it's like come on Please wake up. And the other chemicals, what the hell is happening to our body? What was done? What's going on in here? And what's going to happen to me in 10 years? Am I going to live? Like, I have had to redo my will and make sure I upped my life insurance to the most I can because of pre-existing conditions to make sure that my kids are going to be okay after I'm gone, especially with when COVID-19 hit and I'm like, oh, my God. You know, like, why do I have to, at 42 years old, have to face this? And knowing the worst part is that people did this to us. They didn't drink this shit. They didn't drink this water. They did not. The people who made all these decisions weren't here. They were out in Lansing and Ann Arbor and God knows wherever else making these wonderful decisions. They sipped on their beautiful clean water from their rich houses, and they probably have filtration systems even then. And we're sitting over here like this is what we deserve, sludge and shit and whatever smell is coming out of my sink and my, you know, my double you know, uh, shower head filters that we had to make a Frankenstein of so that way it didn't blister and burn. And it's still, you just sit there, and I go to turn my tap on, want to brush my teeth, you know, trying to be healthy, do whatever, and I turn it on, and I smell it out the tap, and I'm like, <sighs> and then you think, I'm like, I, I, I threw away my fun life, my music promoter, tour manager, worked for five different radio stations, life is great, that's what my, you know, PR marketing is what my life was. I threw all that away to January 2015, start fighting for this, and I thought it was going to be easy, because who, who wants to give people dirty water? Who, who would sit back and allow people to die? Oh, and so here I am. If you look at my, like, 2015 and when we met in 2016 interviews, man, I had that, like, sparkle of, like, we're going to make a change and we're going to make the difference. And, yes, we have. We have made history in, in so many damn ways. Like, Mays v. Snyder has set precedent on how to get through and bust through governmental immunity. <laughs> you know, the NRDC, ACLU, social, pa pa Concern Past Social Action of Me um, versus the City of Flint, State of Michigan, um, to, to the pipe replacement settlement. The first time residents have sued a government and forced them to pay for pipe replacement. So we've made history that hopefully will make better lives for everybody else. But damn it, why, why can't we just be okay? Well, I also think advancing it to all of America, and Jen, I remember you and I were talking about this because you were scared in Maryland the water but uh, you know I think a lot of uh, unfortunately rich people don't seem to care about things until it affects them <laughs> ie Republicans neoliberal wine mom Democrats you know the wine moms are out of control uh, but you know 
I'm personally, uh, my fiance and I are personally uh, thinking about moving soon, and I sent over certain uh, water information for the area we were looking at. This is a pretty, it's not a poor area, and there was cancer-causing contaminants in the water. There's a lot of wealthy areas that have no idea what's in their water, and because half of these categories, whether it be chromium or other things, don't even have any measurements or standards, according to the federal government. It's just like, yeah, there's like a gazillion whatever the standard is of X in your water. And, uh, yeah, it's just chilling there, and nobody would know. Yeah. And I think, God willing, once we're out of a pandemic, and if Trump's not president, I think the next crisis, well, it's already a crisis, but I think the next crisis that everyone's going to freak out about is water. They've been able to cover it up. But once the rich people realize, like, wow, wait, there's cancer-causing chemicals in my water? Uh, Aaron Brockovich is releasing a book about this. Love you, Aaron, if you want to do an interview. Um, about all the contaminants in water that people don't know about and what, how, what and how they should test their water. Uh, tell people that are watching, like we say it's not Flint, but if you just go to your county website or city or wherever you get your water and you actually look at it, you're going to start seeing names of things and freaking out. And you should freak out. So um, one of the things we kept saying here was that the contaminated water doesn't care what's in your checkbook. It's not going to skip the rich neighborhoods and only go to the poor neighborhoods. Y'all are on the same water system. And if you're paying your water bill, that's not a protection either. People like, like I was naive. I, I'm paying really high water bills. I vote. Uh, my government's supposed to do their job. It's my government's not, and that's another part that happens is you talk to people and you watch their like all their faith in what they had believed in just crumble because they realize, yeah, your government's poisoning you, and just to save money or make a profit, how about that? And paying your water bill doesn't protect you from your water being contaminated and shortcuts being done. And I mean, the worst part is that most of the contaminants that are out there, they don't, they're not required to test for them, so they can be like, oh yeah, it's not there because they, oh, they never tested for it. Um, People need to check that out. They need to look at their water quality report, their annual confidence, their water confidence report, which is a garbage name, and not just look at what it says. Look at what they're not testing for. Um, there's EWG, which Aaron Brockovich is a part of. You can actually look up your city and see how, you, how they rank and what is in the water, what else is not showing up on those confidence reports, and look up independent testing. And you need to do that. You need to do it now because... Um, it's, I mean, the sooner you figure it out, the sooner you can get filters, if, if it will actually filter out the contaminants that are in there, um, the sooner we push for change together, like people in a very wealthy white area, like join up with people like us in Flint, um, you know, the louder we get together, the better it go, you know, the better it will go. Um, uh, Dr. King, uh, Jesse Jackson had told me that Dr. King had always said that if the poor middle class would get past all the divides that were put in place to keep us apart and actually unite against the 1%, we would be able to take our country back. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, it's been decades now, and things obviously haven't gotten better, not for not for most people, and um, except for the 1%. Um, but, yeah, water's the last bastion. It's the last gold. And if you think they're not cutting corners, if you think because you're wealthy and you pay your bill and you do all the responsible things, you vote, you do whatever, you think that you're safe, that's what I thought. Well, I also think, and you know very much about this, there's a dirty little secret here, too. I call it the United Corporations for a reason. There are multi-billion dollar corporate conglomerates lobbying the EPA, lobbying the federal government, the CDC, all of it, to make sure you don't have bathing and showering standards, to make sure certain things aren't tested for, to make sure there is no measurement or, you know, or there is no real revision of the lead and copper rule, which is supposed to be the gold standard for testing for lead and copper. There are industries that make billions in profits by dumping their waste in water, by dumping, you know, basically by industrialization, contaminating water, air, wildlife, you name it, that are paying off the government to basically look the other way. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you.